Hi everyone, Bob Thomason here. I want to take a few minutes today and share another Linux video with you. And this one is using a backup utility uh, called Clonezilla and I'm comparing that against RescueZilla. Now here a while back, I've been messing with Linux, particularly Linux Mint quite a bit. And working with several variations of Linux. I've even worked with one from FlightAware and got a, uh, a Raspberry Pi set up. I shared a little information on that in another video. But I wanted to be able to do a backup image of the drive whenever I finish configuring things so that if I ever wanted to go back to it, then I can just take my uh, drive right here which is a just a one terabyte drive and I can take that plug it in restore the image to the to a laptop I'm using this I've got an old laptop that's probably 12 13 years old it's an old Dell and it I'm using it as my test bed and it's I've got an 80 gig mechanical hard drive in it and I'm doing some testing on that. I also have an SSD drive which I've got Linux men on but I don't want to destroy that one. The drive that I've got that I'm testing with is uh, you know it's it came originally I think with Windows Vista installed on it. That quit working I started playing with Linux and here we are. But I really wanted to find a backup utility to where I could save these images that I had created, uh, these versions of Linux as I was going through some testing. And I started out, I was looking for some utilities on the internet, and I came across Clone, Clonezilla. Seems to be a, that a lot of people use Clonezilla. So I started using Clonezilla and playing with that and working through some things and it's Clonezilla is pretty straightforward uh, but it's got a lot of selections where you can go into expert mode and just do a whole host of things with it. The problem that I ran into is that with Clonezilla I couldn't get my backup images my backup information to be consistent and what I wanted to be able to do is easily do a backup to this external uh, USB drive and then go in uh, if I needed to and just grab that backup and throw it back on a drive. And I didn't want to have to go through a lot of hoops to do that. I, was, I worked with Clonezilla quite a bit, got a little frustrated with Cl Clonezilla because I couldn't maintain consistency. Now, may, maybe a lot of it just on me that I didn't understand some things, wasn't doing some things right, whatever. So after a little bit of that, I started doing some more research and I came across, don't remember exactly how I found it, but I came across a program called RescueZilla. And uh, here is a, that the main difference for me is that with Clonezilla, you can easily find an ISO image. Uh, and I use a program called uh, Balance Etcher. Yeah, no, Belina, B B A L E N A Etcher. I use the portable version to take an ISO image and burn it on a thumb drive like this right here. In fact, I have Clonezilla burned on that one. But I wanted to be able to take an ISO image and burn a bootable image on a thumb drive so that I can do my backups and restore and what have you. Clonezilla, I could find an ISO image. It installs, this is a two gig hard, um, USB, so it's no problem installing it on that. And, but 
I wanted to get an ISO image of RescueZilla. Seen a little bit of that. And I wanted to try that out. The problem is I couldn't find an ISO image. I did a little bit of digging and I found this website right here. And I'll put a link to this in, uh, this is a GitHub site. I'll put a link to this information in the description area below. But what I found that you have to do with RescueZilla is you have to build the ISO image on a Linux box, or at least that's, that's the way I did it, and then take that ISO image that's created from the build, and I moved it over to my Windows box, used my uh, etcher to burn the image on here and that worked like a champ so you have to follow what i found though is it's best to follow exactly what's in this information right here that i've highlighted and then once rescuezilla once you go through that and and you just follow the steps here and it, this will take on my set up here it took probably a good 30 to 45 minutes for it to go through everything that needed to be done and create the image and be ready to go so that I mean, that wasn't a problem for me because i just set it up on here and let it go but i would go through this and and build the iso image and then i thought well nothing's telling me where that iso image is uh when you use this get command right here, uh, it clones this from GitHub and then it creates the rescuezilla directory. Well, that's where you do your make command. And so I had to dig a little bit. And one of the directories that it builds or that creates is one called build. And in build, the uh, and it's a subdirectory to rescuezilla a directory called build is where the iso iso image resides now when i created this i was a little skeptical i thought yeah there's going to be something that i've left off here and this ain't going to work right but i went ahead and burned that image onto a thumb drive and then booted that thumb drive on my laptop and for me this has been much easier this has been much easier doing a backup and restore uh, on a Linux system than using clonezilla it's my take that's just my opinion and as I say if you're you, you may very well be uh, accustomed to clonezilla and if it works for you and works consistently, hey, that's fine. Stick with it. For me, it didn't. So that's the reason I wanted to share this video right here, because I really like RescueZilla. So that's all I've got for today. Leave some comments below. This was not an instructional video like a, you know, a how-to, like I normally go through. But I just wanted to give this little review right here. So leave any comments that you got below. Hit the, the uh, like button and also subscribe and hit that little bell down there. Because anytime I put the new videos up, if you click on the bell, it will notify you when they come up. So with that, I appreciate it. Thanks for being here.